third mentioned. great big, you know, humdinger of the week, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, a uh, new film by Julian Schnabel based on the um, memoir or autobiography of Jean-Dominique Bobby, who was a fashion uh, editor who was struck down by a, you know, a hideous stroke, which left him with locked-in syndrome, meaning he could not move anything other than one eyelid. And at the beginning of the film, we see from uh, Jean-Dominique's uh, point of view him looking out at the world, unable to move, and his, the doctor's looking at him and looking at his eye and not knowing whether his eye is working and deciding that actually, since it isn't working and it's drying up, they're going to have to sew it closed. And I was sitting, sitting there in Cannes when the movie started and I started to have something approaching a panic attack because I thought, I can't, you know, it's like that really claustrophobic thing that you, that you get, for example, at the end of the, uh, you know, the Corman Edgar Allan Poe's. I mean, it's really terrifying. I don't know whether you, are you claustrophobic? You ever think not about really, being no. buried alive or no, don't dream never, about, no, you know, fall really. of the House of Usher and, you know, we have we have put her in her tomb alive? No? No. Nothing that bothers you? Not really. I, I did dream the other day I put on a Neil Diamond record by mistake. Does that count? Not really. Okay. Not the same level of terror. Anyway. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> what's wonderful about the film it is... Song Song Blue. Mm, I like that. I like that, and I like Sweet Caroline. Okay. Um, but where, I don't, where do you stand on Brother Love's Travelling Salvation show? Don't know, but I didn't like the remake of The Jazz Singer. Keep going. Okay, so, um, with such black, sort of, you know, bleak subject matter, what's extraordinary about Diving Bell and the Butterfly is that it's such a wonderfully... Uh, sensuous experience as a movie. Now, this is important to say. Julian Schnabel is an artist, um, and often artists, you know, going into cinema don't make the best films. They make kind of art installations. And his two previous films, um, Basquiat and Before Night Falls, I, I didn't like, and I didn't see in them any evidence that he was a great filmmaker. What I saw was evidence of, you know, an artist dabbling in the medium of, of film. So when I saw Diving Bell and the Butterfly, I, um, I didn't go in thinking, this is a great filmmaker. I went in wondering how this was going to work out, and I was really really taken aback by just how wonderful a piece of filmmaking it is. I mean, it's when I say sensuous, it's a kind of film that you can touch and smell and you can feel it in your fingers and it's and feel it in my toes and I'm going to sing Love Is All Around no, and that's the way it goes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That's really awful. Um, but it is. It's and, and, and for a film about a man whose body is paralysed because he what he did was he he narrated his memoirs he uh, by blinking and, I, and as he like there's somebody they they figured out how to recite the alphabet to him in a certain conjunction of what are the most common letters and he would blink when they got to the right letter and they word by word by word and this extraordinary memoir the diving bell and the butterfly came out in which he described in unbelievably poetic terms his life then and now and he said very clearly in this that he really didn't know he was alive before and now through this extraordinary life-changing experience he had become alive and um, I then interviewed Julian Schnabel for the culture show and one of the message boards on I think it's the Guardian or whatever somebody said oh did you see Mark Kermit's interview with him he was fawning all over this director he was you know he, how did uh, the reason I was fawning all over him was I, I love that film and I was astonished at how good it was because I never thought Julian Schnabel was a great filmmaker can I just and, say yeah. shame on you for actually reading the message boards oh no I was directed to it <laughs> oh, okay. by somebody who said you know but you know I mean I'm, I'm not even bro a broadband boy you, you, no, you, have a t you have a total non-reading policy don't you I don't read message boards in general no no, but if anybody says to me, wise. "Have you seen anyway?" Well, so you know, you're, you're right. Shameful. But it was. But, but what I'm saying is, I, when I when I met him, I this kind of enthusiasm for the movie. I mean, it, it's real. I'm feeling it again now. I really love the film. I think it's a fabulous piece of filmmaking. I think you know, again, the Oscars. It's not nominated for best foreign language film because the, that, the way that the Oscars do it is that the country has to nominate their own film. So France have nominated La Vie en Rose, which is a far inferior film, although of course it is a French production. Although it is actually a French US co-production. So there's an argument for diving down the bottom. It makes no odds. It makes no odds. It's a wonderful piece of work. You know, we had Ronald Harwood, the screenwriter, a couple on, of times, yeah. And uh, he's done a brilliant uh, job of adapting the book. And then, of course, it's been translated into French. But it's the visual language of it, and it is that thing about the visual language, the language of cinema, which transcends national boundaries. The soundtrack, the feeling. It's a it's a film of such texture. And I don't care if I look like I was fawning over the guy. I think he I think he made a great film. I think he's a true filmmaker. And I was wrong about him. 
I never had that man down as a good director. Tom in Wandsworth, Simon and Mark seen some great films recently, but Diving, uh, Diving Bell and the Butterfly is absolutely mesmerising. <sighs> Julian Schnabel has done an amazing job of transforming a seemingly unfilmable book into something that actually transcends... Uh, Jean Doe's moving account. Exactly. If only he could put down the paintbrush and make more films, truly a formidable talent. Yes, and I wouldn't have said that on the basis of his first two films, but his third film, it's like he, he was struck by lightning or something, or touched by the hand of God, and something happened, and suddenly he's become a filmmaker. You know, Ken Russell once said that the moment that he, he converted to Catholicism was the moment that the light went on and he became a filmmaker. And it's like that. There's something that happens in people. Something goes bing, whatever it is, and suddenly they're a filmmaker. And I, that was... That's how I feel about Schnabel.